On this video, we will be talking about translational motion and rotational motion. More specifically, we will be talking about the analogous expression of rotational motion. I mean, the analogous expression of translational motion into rotational motion. That is what I mean to say. Now, to start with, let us define the two types of motion that I'll be dealing on this video. The first one is the translational motion. So, a translational motion is a motion in which all parts of a particle or a body moves uniformly in a single direction. When we say that a body moves uniformly in a single direction, we mean to say that this motion experiences the same distance in a given time. So, when a body experiences the same position at a given time, we say that this object is a translatory motion. Or if a body moves in a whole, in a, I mean, if a body as a whole moves such that every part of the body moves through the same distance in a given time, then the body is said to be translatory motion. So, better to, to better understand this, I have here, I'll draw a right triangle. I think this is one, it's a right triangle. And let us say, wait, ang pangit. Let me draw that. And let us say that we have a rectangular block moving or slanting on the edge of this triangle. This is a rectangular block. Let us say this one is the initial position and this one is the final position, P1 and P2. If the block is assumed to slide down this edge without any side movement, every point in the rectangular block experiences the same displacement and move. So, eh, ibig sabihin nga ito yung ng arrow. We have point 2 here. We have this arrow. So, this one is also moving on this direction. That is why transitory motion moves in the same distance at a given time. That is what I mean to say this. And more importantly, the distance between points is also maintained. Right? That is what we mean by transitory motion. It is moving uniformly in a single direction. It is moving with the same distance, with the same uh, points in a given time. That's why it is translatory motion. And the examples of translatory motion that we have tackled are those equations on the first quarter. Those are the translatory motion. Now, we also have the counterpart. Uh, Alright. Uh, let me draw this on this side. Uh, we have a rectangular block, P1, P2, moving in one direction. That is translational motion. We also have the other one, which is the rotational motion. The rotational motion is a type of motion of an particle, of a particle or of an object around a circular path in a fixed axis. So, the difference between the two if the translational motion moves in a single direction at the same time, let us assume that the, trans the rotational motion here, let us have a rotational motion, uh, we have an object, a round object, rotating, right? On a fixed axis at the center, right? So, on this case, we have a circular block going down the edge of the right angle triangle here. If you will examine the location and orientation of the different points of the cylindrical block that we have here, we will tell something that is different on translatory motion here. The points on the cylindrical body experience something much different from this one. Because let us say that we have here the P1, P1, and we have the P2 here. And we have here the, uh, let's say we have P3, and then let us say we have P4. So as this one rolls down the, the edge of the triangle here, it experiences different directions, different directions, at a given time, right? This one is rolling, this one is rolling, but this one is having a right triangle since this one is on a fixed axis. At the same time, we will have as well the resistance of the block to move along this edge, right? From the distance to here, we have uh, this one rolling here, but the arrow is here, and then we will also have the movement going back to resist the motion going downward. That is rotational motion. So, it experiences different directions at a given time. That is what we mean by rotational motion. Now, let me use... Now, let us tackle about the different analogous expression of translational motion into rotational motion. Let us express translational motion as TM and trans uh, rotational motion as RM. I think it's okay to have this, this one here. 
I'll just use another another whiteboard for representations of diagrams. So we have first the translational motion. We have let's have the displacement. So the displacement in translatory motion that we have tackled in the first quarter is being represented by D vector arrow or X. But in rotational motion, it is expressed as angular displacement. Angular displacement. Which is being represented as theta symbol. Angular displacement. And that is a theta symbol. So why theta? We have here a theta symbol because unlike on the displacement of the translational motion, for example, you have an object traveling along a straight path, right? And you have that object. Uh, we have here the initial position, x sub i, and then the final position. So it's just a straight line. So the unit for this one is meter. So let us say we, find, we mean to find the displacement that is delta x, Equal is x sub f minus x sub i, right? And that is expressed in meters. But compared to the angular displace, displacement in rotational motion, so we said that an object, so let's say we have a particle here, this one, moving on a circular path, yeah, that's a circular path, and on a fixed axis. When we say on a fixed axis, let us say you have a baton, you have, let's say you have a baton here, and the baton is being twirled by the majorate at this point. So that is the fixed position or axis of rotation. On this case, this one is the axis of rotation. Axis of rotation. And also the, or the, what do you call this, fixed axis. So on this case, let us say that this particle that we have here is moving along this circular path on a fixed axis. The movement is said to be like this. So this object here is moving on this position. Let us say that this particle, that the displacement of this particle is being expressed as theta naught. And the change on the displacement is represented as a delta theta. And the final position is expressed as theta, for example. So compared to this one, the expression would be delta theta is equivalent to the Theta naught minus the final theta. So, but why we are using theta? As you can see, we have here a particle moving horizontally on a fixed axis, circular path. So, as this object or particle moves along the circular path, it creates an angle. And an angle is being represented mathematically as theta. So, on this angular displacement, the unit is not meter. We will be using uh, units like revolution, radians, or degrees as our unit of expression for the angular displacement because we have an angle, all right? That's the difference between the two. Okay, next let us have the other type of motion, which is our type of translatory motion. We have, what's the other one? Again, we have tackled already the angular displacement and the translational motion for displacement. We have here next the other variable that we have encountered numerous times on our first quarter is the time. Most of the equations is very much dependent of time. They have time representations. And we represent that through variable t. In rotational motion, it is also represented as t, all right, or time. And then we also have the other one. We have the velocity. The velocity in translational motion is being represented by the equation velocity is equivalent to the, to the, to the what? All right, displacement over the change in time. Or for rotational motion, it is being said that the velocity or analogous counterpart is angular velocity. Angular velocity, which is expressed. Instead of velocity, you will have a representation of omega is equivalent to the, this, the equivalent of displacement in rotational motion is theta, right? The earlier discussion, theta over the time retained. And then we also have the acceleration. The acceleration in translational motion is represented as A equals the change in velocity over time. And 
this is being represented on, as a angular acceleration. Uh, we are using the term angular acceleration because if an object moves in a circular path on a fixed axis like the one I discussed earlier, it creates uh, an angle. That is why we are using that term angular acceleration, angular velocity, angular displacement. Angular acceleration, acceleration, which is being represented as, if we have the A here, we will be using alpha is equivalent to the change in velocity, which is change in omega over time. That is what we mean by angular acceleration. And then we also have the other variable for that is very common in translational motion, which is the mass expressed as m. And in rotational motion, the counterpart of this one is moment of inertia. Moment of inertia is expressed in capital I is equivalent to m r squared, where m is the mass, and the r is the rotational radius, rotational radius of the object. The counterpart of the mass is moment of inertia. The difference between these two, first we have the mass in kilograms, the lightness or heaviness of the object. And then for the I, we have the mass as kilogram, the rotational radius as m squared. The unit of this one is kilogram m squared. The difference between the two being the counterpart of mass, the moment of inertia is like this one. For example, we have here a rectangular slide and we have done object rolling. The moment of inertia is the resistance. Resistance of an object to, risk to change its position. So if its object is moving on this one, it will resist the position. So let's say we have here moving this one, going forward, but then it has the other counterpart, which is moving upward to resist the motion. So that is the moment of inertia. The resistance of an object to change its position. But this is the analogous counterpart of mass because this one is on a rotational aspect. This one is on a translational aspect. Now, we also have the other variables after the moment of inertia. Uh, what's the other one? We have Tm and then we have the Rm. Another one is the force. The force in translational motion is termed as the linear force. We have tackled this before. And this is being represented as force equals mass times the acceleration. And then the analogous counterpart of force in rotational motion is torque. This one is a type of force in a rotational motion. This is also a force but is termed for rotational motion. All right. And then instead of F, we will be using the variable tau to distinguish the two types of force. And then we can have the equals, the mass, the counterpart of mass in rotational motion is moment of inertia, I, and the acceleration is angular acceleration in alpha. That is the torque. We also have the other one, which is the momentum or linear momentum in torque, which is expressed as P equals mv or mass multiplied to velocity for the rotational motion the momentum will be termed as angular momentum and is expressed the p instead of p we will be using l capital l is equivalent to the counterpart of mass in rotational motion is moment of inertia expressed as i and the velocity is omega Right. And then we also have the other one, another translationary motion, which is the impulse. The impulse is expressed as change in momentum because impulse is change in momentum. So you just put delta P. So when we talk about impulse, we mean to say we are analyzing the effects of force on different variations of time or different changes in time. Will the force have a greater effect if the time is shorter or longer? That is what we mean by this one. So... Impulse is change in momentum, which is equivalent to the effects of the force on different variations of time. That is the formula for this one. But in angular momentum, we will retain the term impulse. But then, the expression, of course, will be different. We have to distinguish the different equations because they have different way of expression. So we have the delta momentum or the delta P, delta impulse, expressed as delta and the momentum here, the change in momentum or change in angular momentum will be delta L. 
is equivalent to the F, the counterpart of F is tau, or, or this one, and then retain the identity of the time. Alright, that's the equation. We also have the other equation, which is the work. The work and a translationary motion is expressed as W equals force multiplied to displacement. So we say that an object has a work done if the force is applied on it and it changes its position. Now, the expression of work or analogous expression of work in rotational motion is termed as work as well. But of course, the variable will be change. You have the W for work and then the force counterpart of that is tau. And the displacement is represented as theta, angular displacement. Torque multiplied to angular displacement. And then we also have the kinetic energy for the tra translationary motion. Kinetic energy is expressed as one half mv squared or mv squared raised to 2 over 2. Yeah, that's the formula. But in rotational motion, that will be kinetic energy is equivalent to 1 half multiplied to the counterpart of mass, which is moment of inertia, multiplied to the velocity counterpart, which is angular velocity expressed as omega raised to 2. That is the formula for kinetic energy. So that's all for this lecture video. Thank you.